So you just installed or upgraded your Linux desktop to Fedora 41, or are at least planning to do so very soon. But did you know that there are a couple of things that you can tweak or even have to change to get the best experience out of it? In today's video, I'm going to give you a couple of tips that you can consider when upgrading or installing Fedora 41 on your PC, which will ultimately result in a better overall experience or just teach you something new. Let's get straight into it. When it comes to Fedora 41, then there are of course two ways on how you typically install it. You either do it with a boot drive like a USB stick, which commonly applies when you're switching from Windows, or you can simply upgrade it from Fedora 40. Now installing it via the installer is straightforward, and there isn't really anything in here that you need to consider. However, when you're upgrading from a previous installation, then there are some things that you should know. Before you start the upgrading process via the software center or through the command line, you should first make sure that your system is completely up to date. And this doesn't just include regular system updates, but also third-party repositories and extensions. So before you click on upgrade, if you're using any manually added repositories, extensions or features, you should make sure that they already support Fedora 41, but also GNOME 47. If that's the case, then you can go ahead and simply start the upgrading process. Once Fedora 41 is installed on your system, the first thing that you should do is to check for updates again, just in case there are some dependencies or drivers missing that weren't part of the upgrade itself. If everything is good, then congratulations, you're now on Fedora 41. Let's go over the adjustments. Some of you might already know that GNOME 47, the default desktop environment of Fedora, comes with many important changes to fractional scaling, especially when it comes to applications that still use XWayland. Since those applications shouldn't appear as blurry as before anymore, Fedora decided to finally enable this functionality out of the box. If you however upgraded to Fedora 41, instead of installing it from scratch and enabled experimental settings like variable refresh rate or fractional scaling, then you need to adjust these settings manually. I personally recommend the application dconf to do this. Simply open it, search for experimental settings and either reset it to its default values or add the new ones to your existing configuration. For those of you who didn't upgrade from Fedora 40, this is also the place where you can enable variable refresh rate support for free and G-Sync compatible displays. Once everything is enabled, you need to log out of your current session and re-log in to apply the changes. Now we can open up the settings, go to display and enable variable refresh rate support as well as fractional scaling settings on a per monitor basis. Pretty awesome! While we are here, we can also head on over to Appearance, change our system to Dark Mode, choose one of 9 pre-selected accent colors, as well as change our wallpaper. Customizations wise, GNOME is not really the greatest desktop environment out of the box. However, we can extend its functionalities with our next improvement, Extensions. To install extensions, I personally recommend the Extension Manager, which already comes with an inbuilt browser instead of installing extensions via the official website. You can use them to blur the GNOME shell with your wallpaper instead of this grey background, add a custom dock at the bottom, a Windows-like taskbar, also called panel, enable tray icons to see applications that are running in the background, add a clipboard history and much much more. There are a lot of great threads, videos and blog posts about GNOME extensions and what they are capable of, so I definitely recommend to check them out, even if you were already happy with GNOME's default behavior. GNOME's file manager Nautilus has also received a couple of important changes that you should take a look at. With GNOME 47, it is now possible to remove predefined directories like downloads, pictures, etc. from the bookmark list. You can of course also reorder them. Another tip, especially if you're coming from Windows or another desktop environment is to always sort folders before files. And if you plan on using network shares like a file server, you should also consider enabling thumbnails for places outside your local drives. Another way how you can improve the file manager is to populate the right-click menu to create new files. The way how this feature works on GNOME is that you open the program for the file type that you want to create a new file shortcut for, save it and then you move it into the templates directory so that it becomes available. This approach, in contrast to Windows more static one, gives you the advantage that you can quickly create templates for fully formatted files. And I think that they should advertise this feature more, since barely anyone knows what the template folder is actually used for. Anyway, let's move on. When it comes to system applications, another great idea is to enable the RPM Fusion repositories. These repositories include third-party packages that are not included in the regular Fedora ones, since some of them aren't open source or there could be some legal trouble, like proprietary video codecs for example. 
I mean for an entity like Red Hat, which would distribute them. You can do so by pasting these two commands into the terminal, confirm the installation when asked, but still make sure to read what's going on, just in case you didn't copy everything correctly. If you're someone who likes to watch videos locally on your system, then you can now go ahead and install additional video codecs. Or just install VLC, which supports many of them out of the box anyway. And yes, before all of you tell me about MPV, that's also an option. If you're someone who doesn't like GNOME's approach to only include a close button instead of having the typical minimize and maximize buttons, then you should take a look at the application GNOME Tweaks. Not only can you enable these buttons in the Windows section, but you can also change their positioning. Fun fact, if you're wondering on why these settings aren't enabled by default, the reasoning is that if you use GNOME without any extensions, there isn't really any reason to minimize a window if you can just put it on a different workspace. Excluding the maximize button though is a different story. Optionally, this is also the application where you can choose different icon or cursor themes if you go down that rabbit hole. There are already many videos or blog posts that cover this topic, so I recommend you to check them out if you want. Not applicable to everyone, but probably still many of you is, the possibility to connect your cloud services to GNOME. If you have a Google Calendar that you use on your phone or use the Microsoft OneDrive integration on Windows for example, you can simply connect your account, choose what you want to synchronize and it will work straight away. This also works for other services by the way, as long as they support one of these mentioned authentication methods. If you are a fan of a smoother workflow, especially when having several windows open on one screen, you might also be interested in enabling the new accessibility setting Activate Windows on Hover, which basically saves you the click of first activating a window before you can interact with it. The last thing you want to do is to change your PC name, so if you ever need to connect via Bluetooth a different PC or easily manage it in something like your router, it's easily findable. Otherwise, there isn't really much else to do. All of today's options are general recommendations for fine-tuning your experience, but even just the basic configuration of Fedora 1 is not bad. Overall speaking, it's a great release, full of improvements and polishing, especially on battery-powered devices. And now you know how you can improve it even further. So what do you think of Fedora 41? Did you already upgrade to it? Are you using a different distribution altogether? Or are there some things that you dislike about it? Please let us know in the comments down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel make even better videos, then feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well, so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.